Hi y'all, Justin with Kayak Catfish. Well, I am on a South Florida road trip adventure. I am headed down to the Florida Keys to fish with Elias from the YouTube channel, Elias V Fishing. I'm meeting up with him tomorrow afternoon, but I come down a little bit early. So I wanted to do some fishing for some exotics here on Lake Ida. So I just rolled into town. It's about 3.30 p.m. now. I got a couple hours of daylight left. So I'm about to launch the kayak here in Lake Ida, which is a uh, small canal lake here in South Florida. It's got peacock bass, clown knife fish, bunch of other aquarium type fish that are a ton of fun to catch. So I'm gonna fish till dark this evening grab a hotel around here and then come back in the morning and hit it again before I head on down to the Keys. So I brought the camera gear. I brought some sunny weather with me. Apparently it was pouring down rain at the house when I left. Beautiful down here right now. So come with me. Let's see what we can catch out of here. A lot of people have asked how I launch my kayak and the answer is just like a daggone boat whenever possible. Back the trailer in take a rope here, shove it off, pull it back up on the bank and go park the car. Easy peasy when you got a trailer. Again, I just pulled this trailer down here with my Honda Fit compact car all the way down to South Florida, 32 miles a gallon the whole way, buddy. Gas is cheap when you drive a car. <laughs> oh, I got hit right then. No, oh, I got hit right then, man. What is that? That's a peacock. <laughs> oh y'all i was i was cranking my line in i was about to reel up and get the next cast off and we got the first one of the trip here small peacock tiny thing nice that's fish number one as he flops out of my hand no skunk fish trip y'all we on the board nowhere to go but up from here but that's number one let me show you what i'm throwing here to start out with I've got a crappie magnet. That's a 1 8 ounce crappie magnet jig head and a white and chartreuse crappie magnet plastic. I've got this on a basically my bass fishing Ned rig rod. It's an Abu Garcia Veritas rod. It's originally six foot nine inches, although I cut part of the handle off to make it more comfortable for fishing out of a kayak, but it's a light, a medium light action rod, six pound test line. Allows me to cast the lighter jigs a little bit further the six pound test and the one eighth ounce jig head is a good combination for some long casts and i had reeled in my cast and was about midway back to the kayak and i was just cranking it in and he nailed it but i'll show you what i've done here y'all so since i'm short on daylight here this afternoon getting down here when i did I'm kind of fishing close to the boat launch. And so there's a little canal here next to it. And I've hit these docks down through here. And I'm gonna work my way up along this wall and around the corner and hit some more docks where I caught some peacocks in the past. And then tomorrow when I come back out and I've got more time in the morning to explore and hit farther areas away from the launch, up on the second half of this lake there's a canal that separates and you can go through to another park that's got a lot more docks i'm going to go up there in the morning but right now it's all about maximizing my time on the water and getting as many casts as possible which i will do if i shut my gums here and start making some more casts fish right there right there along that wall I don't know what he is yet, but he's pulling good. He's a pulling good man. Oh, ho, ho. let's get him up here and see what he is, man. He's fighting hard. I hope it's another peacock or a clown knife fish. I'd really like to get a clown knife fish. I got one on the artificial last year. Oh, that's a, uh, oh, that's one of them. I forget what they're called. Mayan, Mayan cichlids, I think. I think that's what they're called mayan cichlids they are another invasive fish here some people will probably get on me for uh, not taking these fish out here for releasing them when they're invasive i you know again i'm out here 
as a tourist, basically. I have, he's peeing all over me, too. Invasive and peeing all over me. I have nothing to do with these. Uh, he's out of my hands. He's gone anyway. But, uh, you know, again, as a tourist down here, I don't have a way of disposing fish. I don't know where a, a trash site is. There's nothing set up at the boat launches or nothing. So uh, I ain't fooling with that nonsense. I'm just down here to have a good time. And I think these exotic fish, while they may be invasive, you saw the way that fish was putting a bend in the rod. They are a good time. So I'm gonna catch as many of them as I can down here. Look at him up there. Look at that thing. Boy, their security guard thinks he's something else, ain't he? Bobbing his head at me. It still blows my mind these iguanas are down here like daggone squirrels, man. They all over down here. Oh, oh, something was hitting me. Is that a fish? That is a fish. I thought I got a couple taps and all of a sudden the line just got tight. Let's see what this is. Oh, that's another peacock right there. Another peacock. On the jig and plastic. Look at the coloration on him. Look under his chin. Whenever he'll calm it down. Look at that one up under the chin there, man. I'll turn back into the sun a little bit so y'all can see that one. Oh, he's ornery. Look up under his chin there, man. This is another small one, but uh, just beautiful, beautiful colors. Get on out of here, Peacock. Which all these plastic baits, these, you know, any kind of plastic and a small jig head, it travels well, man, anywhere you go, any body of water, any part of the country. You throw this type of bait long enough, you're probably going to get a bite. Let's see, I cast up under that dock there. Real shallow right here, three feet, but let's see what we can get. Oh, I got one too. Oh, he spit it. Well, at first you don't succeed cast another one back up under there boy i got my line look at that line buddy there we go well if i catch a fish on that cast after the line malfunction i'll really be doing something wouldn't i i don't know if it's gonna happen on that i'll try to do better on the next cast <laughs> oh nailed it right there nailed it right there man oh he come off too Dead it one of them little small ones. There's been two small ones now. Right off the end of this dock here. I wonder if they just all a bunch of little ones there. If maybe there's some better quality mixed in. We'll make a few more casts here and find out. Fish. Oh, right there behind that dock post. And here may be a little definitely better than the last one I hooked and lost. Oh my gosh, look at that! Look at that, folks. That's another one of them giant bluegill. Look at this, buddy. Oh man, that's a nice bluegill. Look at that. That's one of them old copper nose bluegill. My hand on him there. Nice, man. Nice bluegill. I know it seems silly, me coming all the way from Tennessee down to Florida. 12 hour drive to get here. Another three to go to get down to the Keys, where we're staying at anyway. But I'm pretty damn excited over that bluegill, man. That's awesome. Face some big bluegill under there. Let's try this bait right here. That's a one inch gulp minnow on my ultralight rod. Yeah, you better believe I brought it with me too. I got a fish on too. I got a fish on right here. I don't know what he is. Is that another one of them bluegill? Oh, it is, man. Oh, it is. That's another one of them old copper nose bluegill. Look at this, man. We don't have these back home where I'm at. They're, you know, people oftentimes stock these in their ponds. 
some some of the smaller TWRA lakes back home have them. This one here's got some kind of parasite or something. It got bumps all over. But in our public waters, we don't have these, but they are a strain of bluegill that just get really big. And that one is a dang nice one right there. Let's let him go. I got to make a few more casts here with this gulp, man. Well, I didn't get that up under there. I got it by that front post. We'll, we'll see what's going on. The other two have been up under the dock just a little bit. That's exciting, folks. I'm running out of daylight here, too. It's, I guess it gets dark a little earlier down here than what it does back home. I guess since we're on the eastern side of Florida. Oh, fish hit me. Let's see what this one is. I'm real shallow here, folks. I'm sitting in four feet, casting up a little bit shallower. Oh, that's another nice one. That's another nice one. Oh, yes. Yes, look at that. Look at my hand on that thing, buddy. Easy, easy, bluegill, easy. I did not bring a measuring board with me. So we're out of luck on getting the, the links on. But I guarantee you that right there is probably... Oh, he's got to be 10 inches. Again, these... these copper nose bluegill you can see the coloration difference on them they just get bigger than the northern strain bluegill and some of the other sunfish species but boy they fight hard too they still got all the fight of a bluegill just in a bigger package and that gulp buddy the gulp catches bluegill anywhere in the country any type of bluegill you're gonna wear them out on that bait right there, man. One inch gulp minnow. I buy the smelt color because it looks like shad back home. I don't know what the normal forage species is down here. I imagine they got all kinds of stuff up under here or down here, but that bait represents a small bait fish. Big fish eat small fish. That's just nature. fish that feels like another good one too that is another good one right there actually is that a let's see yeah i guess it is the coloration on him fooled me right there man this one here if a bluegill looked that color back home he would have been dead for about two days <laughs> well, i'm old zombie looking bluegill here this is one then that I've left in my cooler for dead for three or four days, what he looks like. <laughs> they are stacked up under this dock though. As I knock a jig head off my magnet here. Lordy days. I'll get back in business here directly. They boats keep going by out here, y'all. I'm gonna take a break here and show you this lake ida it's just a kind of an open area in a canal system here and yet people bring their big boats right there went one there's been some jet skis out here this afternoon and i imagine riding a jet ski in a place like this is comparable to me taking this kayak and putting it in a big swimming pool like yeah i could get in the kayak in the swimming pool but is it really that much fun you know i i wouldn't think it is riding a jet ski out here by gosh they're out here here they come again. Look at that sky over there, y'all. Sun's going down. Orange, purple, beautiful sunset. That's some dang good looking fish here too with the peacocks and some of these copper nose bluegill. I'm gonna make some more casts here before I run out of daylight. Gotta quit talking. Less talking, more casting. Got that cast way up under there, hopefully. Hopefully they some more deeper back up under there. Something was pecking. Oh, he got it. He got a 10. Oh boy, he's a pulling y'all, look at that. Oh no, he's got me in something too. Okay, he just come out of it. He come out of it, whatever he was in, he come out. 
Oh man, this thing is fighting like the dickens too. I don't know what he is. Oh, that's another one in Big Bluegill. <laughs> Here I am, South Florida, hoping to get some peacocks and just got on a slap. I want you to look how thick that bluegill is, man. Holy cow, that's a thick bluegill. Oh man, look at that, y'all. I know I'm running out of daylight here. You probably can't see him real good, but just look how thick that thing is, man. Look at the shoulders on it. That's nice. Go back home, bluegill. They gone. I'm telling you folks, I really wanted to get me some peacocks out here. But again, this is these are exotic to me because I don't have these back home and I love getting me some bluegills. I'm gonna sit here and keep catching me a few more if I can. Oh, there he is. He hit it out from out from the side that dock. I come over here to kind of hit it from a different angle. And buddy, it worked. I'd made a few casts there up in front of it, wasn't getting bit anymore. And come over to the side and I got another daggone slab that you can't see because he's gone. He said he wasn't doing this whole camera stuff. That wasn't what he signed up for. I'll see if one of his friends is a little bit more photogenic over there. Yeah, folks, I'm I'm going to the upper part of this lake in the morning. Oh, I had another one on. But you better believe when I come back through, before I leave, I'm going to hit this dock again. You better believe it. That nair about robbed me. You know, most people go on vacation, they, they, they get them a souvenir to take home. That fish said, heck with that, Paul, so he's going to take a souvenir from the tourist. That's what he was going to do. There's one. There's one. What is, is that another bluegill or is that something else? I can't tell. Oh, it is, it's another bluegill. I'm on a different dock here now, y'all. I fished that other one until they quit biting and, and just made my way up. I fished a different dock, didn't get a single tap or anything. And come on up here to this one. We got that little fella right there who's camera shy also. You can tell nobody fishes for these bluegill down here in South Florida. They don't know how to act on camera. They don't have a daggone clue. They supposed to smile and look good and get their hair fixed and everything for the camera. They don't know. I'm gonna try to educate them, but I ain't got long to do it. Hopefully I teach them this time. And next year when I come back, they'll know how to behave on camera. Fingers crossed if something don't eat them first. <laughs> Folks, I may have spent just a little too much time on them bluegill. I couldn't help myself, but I got just a little bit of daylight left here. You can see sun is down. We're right here at the witching hour. I'm gonna bust out the topwater plug and see if I can't get a peacock or something exotic to come up and smash that thing. So I threw the whopper plopper here for just a few minutes, no bites on it, running out of daylight. So I'm gonna do this closing while I still can. Hey, session number one down here in South Florida. Didn't have long to fish once I got down here, but feel like I made the most of it. A couple small peacocks, some really nice copper nose bluegill, that little Mayan cichlid, whatever that thing was. Been a productive afternoon, but I'm gonna go grab a hotel Give me something to eat, get a good night's rest, and then I'm gonna be back out here at first light in the morning. Again, I'm meeting Elias tomorrow afternoon down in the Keys. He was driving part of the way today. I think he said he was gonna stop off in Jacksonville and spend the night and then drive the other half tomorrow. So uh, looking forward to linking up with him and hopefully we're gonna catch a variety of stuff down in the Keys. Fingers crossed, maybe get me a big shark. That's what I come down here to Florida for. I love all this stuff here but I really want to get me a big shark this time. So I don't know, fingers crossed. We'll see how it goes. But anyway, y'all, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.